All right, welcome back to Power Forward. Justin White alongside Mateen Cleaves. Mateen, what is good, my man? Jay White, I am flying high. Life is good. The weather is good. No complaints, baby. Well, uh, <laughs> Mateen, you know this, you know, being a, a Michigan native, that there's no better time in the state of Michigan than fall, right? I mean, the yes. weather is great. You got football. And then you've also got another staple, uh, which is cider and donuts. Right. And apple picking. I mean, oh, that, yeah. if, if you live in Michigan, you're, you're doing those things in the fall. Um, my question for you is, what are you a bigger fan of? Cider and donuts or the apples? Man, I would have to say cider and donuts. You know, I, I love the apples, but cider and donuts, Jay White. Come on. Michigan. I was just checking. I mean, I, oh, I, I had man. a feeling you were going to answer that way. <laughs> Cider and donuts, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the same page as you. Uh, and, it, you know, speaking of, um, if you live especially in Metro Detroit, you know all about Blake's. I mean, that that is a staple uh, here in Metro Detroit. And we are very pleased to be joined by the president of the Blake Family Companies. He's also, by the way, the founder of Blake's Hard Cider, which we're going to get into as well. Andrew Blake joining us here on Power Forward. Andrew, what's going on, man? Hey guys, thanks for having me on. How are you? Well, so he's a Spartan as well, Justin. You got to say that. Come on, that's oh, a you're right. I, bur- I buried the lead. Class of 2011, man. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, uh, let, let's jump right in there, Andrew. Um, you know, because because you know, you, you the, the family has been in business now. This is a 75 year old family company. Uh, you guys are actually celebrating your 75th anniversary this year. So congratulations on that huge milestone. Thank you. Thank you. For, for you, was it always a, a given that you were going to join the family business or or was there ever a, another avenue that you thought you might pursue uh, when you went to college at Michigan State? Yeah, no, you know, I went I went to Michigan State, you know, kind of with my eyes wide open. And um, like a lot of people going to college, you know, I kind of got kicked in the teeth. You know, I, I, I realized that, um, um, you know, the academic route was was one that, you know, I didn't know if I was necessarily excelling in. Um, you know, I, I, I learned a ton at Michigan State, but really I kind of learned to, to, to really, you know, that's when my entrepreneurial, you know, kind of spirit got sparked. And, you know, when I was at Michigan State there, I kind of made the commitment that I wanted to come back in the family business. But, um, you know, I didn't think I was going to do it through, you know, necessary business degrees, finance degrees. I, I, I ended up getting a business degree um, after, you know, some, some borderline, you know, flunking out. Um, but really what was, what was inspired there at Michigan state was kind of my, my, my commitment to myself to be a self learner, you know, self teacher, um, and hard worker. And, you know, it was at Michigan state where I decided that I was going to commit to, you know, this idea, which later became, you know, Blake's hard cider company and, you know, come back to the family business and pitch that. I love it. I I love that, man. And and you, you know, hard hard work, man, you can't lose. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you're working hard. And and let me ask you this, because your your family has been successful over the years. I mean, super sure. successful, right? Now, there are people that's trying to be the heir apparent of parents or running businesses or whatever the case is. And with that, it could be a lot of pressure, you sure. know, uh, and you've taken that next step. So was there pressure um, or a little second guessing uh, yeah. before you really jumped into it? Yeah. Yeah, great question. You know, for me, it was always about, um, you know, my family was very supportive and, and never pressured to come into the family business. It was kind of my choice. So, you know, kudos to my family for kind of allowing that because, you know, if I wasn't willing to put in the time and effort and I was just coming in because I thought, you know, the family wanted that, I think you know, you'd be in it for the wrong reasons. You got to be in it because you want it, because you want to be better, because you want to evolve yourself. And you want to add to, to, to the enterprise. So, um, you know, definitely a lot of pressure. Um, but, you know, like, you know, you know, Mateen, as, as an athlete, you know, pressure is sometimes good. It makes you step up. It makes you train. It makes you study. It makes it makes all these things. So, you know, a little bit of that pressure, I think, I think is is powerful in, in helping you see through to your goals and push through on a lot of things. So, you know, I don't look at that pressure as bad. I, I look at it as, as kind of a positive pressure. Gotcha. You you mentioned, you know, being an entrepreneur, um, yes, you know, and obviously you've learned from some great people um, in, in the business. To you, 
Um, what is it that makes a successful entrepreneur? Um, obviously, there's lots of things, but what are what are the ones that really jump out at you? Um, that's a great question. You know, I think you have to be, um, you know, you got to be one of the hardest workers in the room. You know, I, I, I definitely believe that um, you have to have, you know, kind of a, a unique sense of, 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 um, of self-confidence to, you know, even push through when you're, you know, when you're not confident. I mean, we're all second guessing at all times and worried and nervous and you kind of have to have this you know, you have to be able to, you know, you have to go into, you know, kind of a, a cold mode where you are able to kind of push through, you know, those nerves and just continue forward. And I think, you know, entrepreneurs really, you know, where we're, we're a lot of people get nervous and, and fearful and may, might not push through with an idea, a concept or, or a business, you, know, you have to be willing to, to kind of, you know, sit in the pocket and, and, and continue um, you know, while, while, you know, adversity is kind of looking at you. So I think you have to be, um, you know, you have to be a hard worker and you have to be, um, you know, willing to, you know, endure some suffering, you know, as it relates to the amount of time you're going to put in the commitment you're going to give, you know, time away from your family. I think all those are real things. And I know in, in this kind of current day and age, it's, there's a lot of, you know, work-life balance talk, but I don't, I don't know if that, necessarily always equates for an entrepreneur because there's always someone else that's working just as hard, you know, competing to, 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 you know, take your spot and it's all positive competition, but you know, you gotta be willing to play at the highest level. I love that. And and I think what people, my thing is I, I watch and I see a lot of, po- I listen to a lot of podcasts, I mm-hmm. watch TV and I interact with a lot of people. And what I've noticed is that you got a lot of people that want to be successful, but they're not willing to do what it takes to be successful. Everybody has a want. Everybody uh, wants to be great. But for you, you talked about, you know, being able to endure adversity. And, uh, you know, how important is that? Because, yeah, you have to know, um, you know, certain things. You have to be well versed in the, um, the arena that you're playing. And I'm super I'm sorry about that. But how can you talk a little bit about, you know, how me- being mentally tough and being able to overcome adversity as super important when you're trying to be successful in life. Yeah. I mean, you know, when we, when I look at, um, you know, the adversity is kind of the opportunity you have, at least what we've always looked at to to lean into. So, you know, in 2013, you know, we're a farming operation. We grow a thousand acres of apples and tree fruits and 2013, we had the worst, um, actually it was 2012, the worst freeze we've ever had. So no apple crop. And, you know, that was an opportunity where, where we could have folded and looked at like, you know, the woe is me, you know, mentality as their business. But, you know, we use that as an opportunity to know that we need to expand our offerings beyond just apples, you know, beyond just products that come from the ground. And we really looked at that as a vulnerability that we would never be caught on, caught in again, you know, to diversify, you know, our thinking and the products we offer, um, you know, the areas we grow it. And so, you know, that's made us a stronger company. When I look at the pandemic that we've all just kind of went through and are coming out of, you know, we as an organization, you know, leaned into the challenge knowing that, you know, we were going to have to pivot. We're going to have to become more enabled. You know, we had to get into the e-commerce space. We were going to have to, you know, do, you know, bring our products to people if people couldn't come to us. Um, And, you know, that's fundamentally, I think, transformed our business. Now, people are still coming to visit us. We're one of the most visited spots you know, in Michigan, but, you know, I do believe that, um, you know, we have moved some things forward that might have not been moved forward for three or five years, you know, we've become more e-enabled, more mobile. Um, and, and so I think whenever you have advers- adversity, there's an opportunity, um, you know, kind of within that to, to, to transcend it and become a better version of yourself. And our, you know, our business has, has, I think, successfully done that at multiple times and hopefully, you know, with the right leadership will continue. You know, Andrew, I I find it interesting that, you know, Blake's has this very wholesome brand, right? Like you said, it's all about family experiences and taking the kids apple picking and going up to to Blake's and having, uh, as we mentioned earlier, cider and donuts in the fall or, or, you know, any time of year, really. So I find it uh, kind of interesting that that you have chosen to put your fingerprints on the business, uh, at least in part through the hard cider uh, part of the business. Yes. Um, and that has done very well. I mean, you you look at what you guys are doing now. I think what you're in 18 states. Um, you know, this this hard cider business has really taken off. Um, 
give us the the background on how you came up with the idea and, and, and you know, how you kind of uh, thought to yourself that this could align well with what Blake's already had going on. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, it, it, going back to the adversity, um, you know, we really, really, um, you know, when we 2012 came around and we were looking to diversify, we had no product that could, li- that could live on the shelf. We had no product that, um, you know, had a shelf life of any degree. It was a week to a couple of days. Um, and when, you know, the, when, we lost our apple crop. We said, well, we not only need to diversify our product offering, but we got to find a product that can live on the shelf longer term. And it wasn't, you know, and it was with this idea of hard cider, you know, we've been making juice forever. We're apple growers. It was like, okay, well this, you know, transforming it, turning into alcohol, you know, it, it, it puts a year to two year shelf life on the product. We can get it out, you know, to California, to Florida, to New York, um, you know, and it has longer range, whereas a lot of our products were very localized. Um, so there was just a unique opportunity and a unique evolution, you know, in, in our ability to, 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 to see that opportunity and, you know, kind of learn from the pain that we were going through, you know, in the business at the time. And it was very painful at the time to not have an outlet like that. But, you know, the hard cider has been a unique, you know, opportunity for us to scale beyond just the Midwest and Michigan. Man, and you it's funny listening to you talk, man. You have a unique um ability, it seems like, to overcome adversity and to pivot and to adjust and adapt. Yeah, yeah. Um, get you talk about how important that is because I think people uh they don't understand, like, especially now, the world is so fast, everything is changing. Yeah. So to be able to keep up and compete and and, and stay, stay there. I mean, you have to be nimble. You gotta be ready yeah, to adapt. You gotta be you gotta be nimble, but you gotta love what you do, man. And yeah. and part of it is is you know, this is fun. It's fun, you know, you're you're in you're in the game. You know, we love what we do and we like being in the game of business, man. We like being entrepreneurs and we like, you know, you know, seeing what the day, the year, you know. The pandemic, you know, is going to throw at us and we're going to figure out how to how to, you know, evolve past it. And we have a team and a culture that wants to take those challenges on and look forward to it and and believes, you know, and we're confident enough in ourselves. But we're but it's not foolish confidence. It, you know, we put in the work, you know, we, we, we everyone on our team does. And I think that that allows us to, you know, get excited about taking on challenges and and, and, and beating them, you know. I love it. Um, one very interesting thing that I read, you know, your, your bio, um, I'm not sure I've seen this before. You are a self-proclaimed humanist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell, tell us what that, that, well, that means. Um, so ce- well, celebrating what it means to be a, a human. What no, does that mean well, to you? Well, it, it was just that I got so tired of everyone's like, what do you do? Who are you? Are you an entrepreneur? Are you a business guy? I'm like, dude, I, I, uh, you know, I call myself like, you know, a farmer founder, you know, I guess in my, on my business card, but none of them always feel felt right. It felt like very boxing in. Cause I'm a lot more, you know, everyone's a lot more than that. You know, I got, I have family and friends and I have spiritual interests and I have hobbies and all these sorts of things. So, um, you know, I always kind of liked to, you know, I feel like my work life and, you know, business life have all kind of blended into, you know, kind of my one life that I live. And, and I feel like, you know, as a, as, as a humanist, you know, it's like, well, we're just humans and we're trying to figure it out and we work and we play. And, you know, sometimes we work while we play and, you know, and, and play where we work, we do all that sort of stuff. And, and I think that in this day and age, I don't know any other way to be, I can't go home. I can't be an entrepreneur and at six o'clock, turn it off. You know, it's like, that's not who I am. I never would be able to do that. So it lives with me throughout. And, you know, I've just tried to find a good way to integrate all those parts into something that, you know, makes me a good, you know, husband and father and friend and, and entrepreneur and, you know, colleague. And, you know, I just called it a humanist because I didn't think entrepreneur was 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 fulfilling enough, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. And, 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 you, and you listen, man, I, I love this. I'm having so much fun, man. You are. I love I can listen <laughs> Thanks, to you man. talk for hours. Well, yes. Well this, well, this is fun for me, man. I like I like, you know. You're like an idol, you know, watching you, you know, bring a championship for us. So uh, oh, this is fun for me too. Man. I love it. I love it. And you, 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 you mentioned something, um, and I'm gonna take you back down memory lane a couple minutes ago. But you said um, culture, uh, yeah. you know, that culture. And I work for a company, you know, that's big on culture. First, I mean, like we're big on, you know, speaking to people in the morning, making eye yes. contact, holding doors for each other. Yes, sir. Just little stuff like that. We're yes, big sir. on that. 
And then we build on that and, and it gets bigger and better. But you mentioned culture, man. Can you talk a little bit about how important it is to have a good culture if you're trying to be successful? Yeah, it's, you know, to me, it's everything. I mean, because at some point, I mean, you know, you know, you played on a team. You're only one guy. You, I mean, you were you were the heart and soul, in my opinion, and in a lot of ways. But, um, you, you know, when you get are, are in a business that's scaling, like what happens, you know, we have 900 employees. So what happens when, you know, when I'm not there, you know, the culture is the only thing that represents, you know, and what lives through all the employees and we all help create it. It's not, you know, me or, you know, or other members of the family. It's every employee that says, this is what we agree on. This is, this is what makes us unique. We work hard, you know, we're thoughtful, we're mindful, you know, we're in the business of creating, you know, we circle around the idea of creating, you know, experiences for families. That's what we're into. You know, we, we do the family experience thing. So, you know, that's what we lean into. And, um, you know, that's the culture we surround ourselves with and everyone partakes in that. And so, you know, as a business owner, I've just always been very adamant that, you know, we do have a culture here and it is rooted in working hard and it is rooted in some of these things. And you know, we work to protect it because if we don't, you know, we may not be the best version of ourselves we can be. You uh you mentioned Andrew uh, when we spoke uh, previously that you, that Blake's is kind of in this transformational stage. Yeah. Um, and you're and you're really excited about this because you see this as a as a huge opportunity. Um, you know, for for where the business could go. Um, you know, we mentioned you know seventy five years this year. That's how long the business business has been around. But you really see this as a huge opportunity of, of where the business could go in the future. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're a seventy five year old startup, and you know, we're transforming. We are you know, bringing in outside help. We are bringing in, you know, different avenues of, of opportunity for our business to grow and people to help steward that. And so it's an extremely exciting time for us to, to grow our business and to think differently about our you know, business and to challenge ourselves. And, you know, we're just really in this very creative um, and energized state as a company. And we got a lot of good things going and, you know, I'm a big believer in momentum. So I think the goal is not to screw it up. You know, it's kind of it. So, you know, just trying to do the best job we can to not mess up the opportunity. Man, 75 years, man. Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> I, and, and, you know, and I have a sports background. And you, That's right. They got some of the sports teams that have had a run. And yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, 75 years, man, dominating. Like that. We're trying. We're trying, guys. But, yeah, um, yeah I uh, – it's all fun and, 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 you know, we love doing it and, you know, we're, we're, we're very humbled and honored to, to be stewards of the land that we do and the experiences we create for people. So, um, you know, it, we're very blessed to have the opportunity to do it and hopefully for 75 more. And let me you, ask you this. Sorry, Justin, because I, go ahead. humility seeks out, you know, as you're talking, I mean, to have been so successful, 75 years, family's done great, but you're so humble. You're so humble. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, the son, I'm the son of a farmer, man. Like they, you get made fun of, like, you know, you know, you, you, you drive a fancy car, you wear fancy clothes, your dad makes fun of you, man. So like you, you gotta, you gotta kind of stay humble and you know, family helps keep you humble, dude. You know, so that's I it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> does that, does that farmer mentality? I mean, when you think about being a farmer, you, you think about hard work, right. And putting in long hours. I mean, is, is that something that, you know, is kind of inextricably tied to, to the culture of yeah. Blake's. I mean, e even, you know, yeah. as, I mean, even as you guys edge. go through it's, this metamorphosis. It's our edge, man. We're proud farmers. We're hard workers. We care about people. We care about the land. We care about, you know, being honest and all those things. And, you know, we're willing to outwork you. So, you know, it's our, it's our edge and we love, we love where we come from and we're proud of it. And, you know, hopefully we continue to, to, to be a good example for other people and other companies. Well, motivational speaking might be in the future for you because hey, now, thanks, now Andrew, yeah, you got me wanting to be a farmer. You know, well, come on out, man. Let's do it. <laughs>